terms of the social interests expressed through the, finance, the political system, you see clearly a great power of the financial um, elites. Clearly that is demonstrated in country after country, country after country. You look at a place like Greece, which has been devastated. The sector that has had its interests protected throughout that, uh, are the banks. Whatever else might have happened uh, to the country, the banks must be protected. And they were protected, right, in a variety of ways. So clearly this, the, the social interest that has managed to project its um, well-being best, right, uh, in, the, in the political system is the financial interest. But the question you're asking me is about politics and how the, what has that meant for, polit for politics and poli for political ideology? Well, t to me, the, the most important uh, change and transformation of the last two decades as financialization went into overdrive is the collapse of um, all social democracy. The, 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 the social democrats, I know in this country social democracy hasn't had the same history for reasons of how U.S. capitalism. Well, s sort of the New Deal. Sort of, it's the closest. Sort of the, it's, it's the, yeah. the American version of it is the New it's Deal. It's the closest you get to it, but yeah. obviously in Europe and elsewhere it has a, um, that's collapsed. The, and the reason it's collapsed is because it basically accepted lock, stock, and barrel. The, um, the arguments of neoliberalism, the idea of the market, the idea of financial growth and financial uh, expansion, he really believed in it. And the ones who argue most um, forcefully still for that are actually social democrats. It's, in, it's incredible. And therefore, their, their influence, uh, certainly in Europe, is just vanishing. In the, the social democratic party in Greece has disappeared. The Social Democratic Party in Spain is disappearing nearly as fast. Social Democrats in Portugal are nowhere to be seen. Um, in country after country, in Germany, the so social democracy is hobbled because of that, because they've accepted uh, the, the, these ideologies. They've got nothing to propose, um, which would be the equivalent of what they used to propose back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, which was some kind of regulated capitalism within those um, confines mentioned before some kind of, you know, let's manage it. The scope for that has become much less. In this context, there is room for the left, as in the non-social democratic left. The tragedy there is that the left in Europe and elsewhere has been incredibly weak uh, because of the events of the last two to three decades, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the massive defeats of the 80s in terms of class struggle and so on. And the left hasn't been uh, hasn't been able to take up the mantle, um, not yet. Um, there is life, it's not a corpse yet, there is life. Um, things are happening, particularly because of the crisis. It took time for the left to comprehend what happened in the crisis and the beginning to respond. Um, who will fill, fill the space left by the collapse of social democracy, the, by, the, by the ideological bankruptcy of social democracy, is the most interesting question for politics today. Who will who will fill that space? How will it be filled? Um, it remains to be seen. Now, when you look at the rest of the political spectrum, and again in Europe, you see very important things happening there too. Um, the financial crisis has been resolved in the interest of the financial elite, clearly, and the cost has been passed on to working people and often onto the poorest, clearly. And this naked demonstration of class interest and class um, privilege has actually begun to bring changes on the right too. Um, the parties of the right are changing. We see a hardening, uh, the emergence of the extreme right uh, in a big way, reflecting social frustration as well and giving it that kind of very conservative, very backward uh, um, outlook, but also the emergence of an authoritarian streak uh, within the rest of the right, times are dangerous. The more um, class-based this society becomes and the more unstable it becomes, the harder the uh, options. We know that from history. That's why it's unstable, as I, as I said before. That's why things are going to happen, and they're going to happen sooner rather than later.
Should we take a break? Kind of go casual. There's wine and beer for sale out here. And uh, there's a donation tray. Uh, thanks, everybody. How about t shirts, hoodies? And uh, but we're going to hang around. We can talk some more. But I'll do a closing so we have it for the edit, for the fun. You got you got me on a single. Give me a yes. You got me. Okay. Thank. <clears throat> Tell me when you got me. <coughs> okay. I, I, I settle for a sec. That's it. That's not settling. Um, so what I'm supposed to end this now? We're going to edit this, obviously. Um, so that concludes our first town hall at the Real News Media Center. Thanks for joining us, and join us in the future next week. Oh, I don't know if this is going to be edited in time. All right, I won't promo the next one. We have one next Friday. I'll tell you about it in a second. Thanks for joining us on the Real News Network, the first town hall from the Real News Media Center in Baltimore. Please join us for the next time. Okay, just quickly, Friday, you don't shoot this. This coming Friday is a screening of the film Shadows of Liberty. It's a documentary about how ma uh, commercial news has closed down some very important lines of investigative journalism and generally what's wrong with mainstream news. But a, a couple of the more interesting stories are um, Roberta Baskin was doing a, a story on Nike sweatshops and for ABC, I believe, 2020, and they were about scheduled to show it. And then they made a deal where Nike was going to ABC, I guess it was ABC, they were going to be the Olympics that year. And Nike was the main Olympic sponsor. So they pulled her report from 2020. And then they wanted to edit it and water it down. And, and, and then, then they wanted a, all the journalists to wear jackets with Nike logos on, not just the sports journalists, everybody for the, during the Olympics. So she quit in a big public thing. And then uh, another story in the film is uh, the story of uh, the aircraft that went down off the coast of New Jersey. New Jersey. A couple hundred people were killed. And the FAA said it was a mechanical explosion, caused explosion. But there was a lot of suspicion that it was actually shot down by the Navy during Navy, naval exercises. And Christina Jorgensen was working for CBS News investigating that. And the Navy met with the heads of CBS News. And then she was told to stop investigating. And she refused, and she was fired. Uh, both Roberta Baskin and Christina Jorgensen are going to be here to talk about their experiences. Uh, Glenn Ford from Black Agenda Reports is going to be here to talk about the media and how it covers urban America. And I, I, think, I think we're saying the doors open at 6.30. We're going to start at 7. Or maybe I'm wrong. Is it 7.30 for that? Yeah, there's a flyer. Actually, I, th I think the screening starts at 7.30. It's about an hour film, and then the panel will follow it. Anyway, thanks everybody, but hang around if you want to talk some more. What's that? What's that? I said, doors open at 6.30, drink the wine, go for the screening at 7.30. Yeah, that's, I think that's the scheme, yeah. <laughs> Can we announce the democracy conference? Yeah, please do. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody want to announce them? Go to it's our economy. 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 It's so sad we're going to be away next week, so we're going to be away next week. So, yeah, I yeah. think so, yeah, it probably opens up. Yeah, it's just a big thing. I just wanted to hear where you got to hold it. Thank you.